the Artisan Sound channel. And in this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to set up snippets and cues in the show control section of the X32, uh, Behringer X32 or Midas M32 uh, sound control board, sound mixer. So um, I'm just for ease of making this video, I'm using the um, uh, X32 edit software that is running here on my MacBook. Um, but this is just allowing me to remote control and, and set it up so that it's easier to show this uh, as a screen record rather than uh, hovering with my iPhone over the actual console and showing you there. The other thing that is way easier to do in the, um, in the software than in the actual hardware uh, mixer is that in the hardware mixer it's very tedious to name things because you have to use a combination of the controllers uh, the you know the turn knobs to um, uh, to set each and every letter of any name that you want to type in and that's just so much easier to do that uh, when you have a computer keyboard hooked up to the software and you can just do it in the software and then save it to a USB to, uh, stick and put the USB stick into the um, into the console, and then just load the show from there, um, and then you have it in the in the board. So the idea here is all the same. We're here in the show control section, and you have tabs here for cues, scenes, and snippets, and um, it all starts with snippets. The way the architecture works is that in snippets you can save any selection of parameters on the board and then you use the cues section to tie several snippets together and make it so that you can just hit the go button um, each time you want to advance to the next setting of the board and so um, the way that i use it from the beginning uh, let me just make it simple, okay, so that it's not all convoluted and difficult. The simplest way, the simplest mode, I would say, to use the uh, show control section and snippets and cues is to simply control it, uh, to simply use it to control your microphone mutes and unmutes for a show. Okay, so that was kind of when I first started mixing musical sound, uh, musical theater sound, um, that was my my greatest kind of anxiety is having to hover over the script and uh, you know hit mutes and unmutes manually on on sixteen faders on the console while also trying to listen to what was going on and controlling the the sound mix itself. So that was just I was not having fun with that. So then when I discovered that you can control this with the snippets and cues. That's the first layer, the first level of automation that I implemented. <clears throat> and I, I think it's maybe just the easiest if I show you the simplest way of using uh, a cue list um, with, uh, with snippets. Okay, so the simplest way is just simply, or, or let me explain first what you can, what this window here means where you can set uh, the snippets and what's saved in the snippets. So in the snippets, you have a section here that lets you select parameter filters. So that selects what type of information is saved in a snippet. And then over here in this section, that's basically the, uh, um, the section where you can s select which channels or which faders um, these settings that you, uh, these parameters that you filtered out here, that you selected over here, applies, all right? So a combination, so again, to start this simple is you can just select mute only, so that only saves the mute status, and then over here you just select the channels that you want to save. So in our case, I was just interested in um, saving the mutes for our 16 microphone channels and um, so I'm just selecting the 16 microphone channels over here. So now what this f window here means is that this snippet here only saves the mute status, so mute or unmute, and it only saves it for the first 16 channels. That's where our microphones come in. Okay, so now let's just um, 
create a few snippets here, disregard these other ones. We may be able to talk about these at the end of the video if um, if it doesn't get too long to just kind of deal with the simple uh, simple uh, mute status uh, snippets. So basically, what you would do here is once you have configured, once you have selected what uh, what you want to save, you can now go come over here. And you see, okay, so the first one, I always set the first snippet as mute all because that happens all the time, right? That you just want to mute all input channels. And that's a simple shortcut that doesn't need to have any kind of uh, specification or, or um, you know, being made, uh, being made specific to any scene or anything. So it's like when everything gets muted, that happens a lot. So I can always recall this snippet several times in, uh, throughout the show. So let's just say we're starting the show and in the beginning of the show, this happens to be Brigadoon here, but uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just an example. So in, the show starts with Tommy and, um, and Jeff being on stage. All right. So that's the first scene. And now I'm just going to use the, f the snippets that are free down here because I don't want to mess these up for right now just to show you this example. So I'm just going to leave one blank and then I'm just going to go into 12. I'm going to click into 12. And I'm going to just call it scene scene one. Okay, you can name this. There's a limited amount of characters that you can use here, but uh, let's name it scene one. It's just an example. And when you click return, it asks you if you want to save the snippet number twelve, snippet number twelve in, as scene one. And you click OK, and now the scene one is saved. So now we can already test this. You can go back and double click on mute all and watch the mute status down here of channel one and channel six. So I'm going to double click on mute all. It asks me to confirm if I want to load snippet uh, zero and you can see bam all um, at 16 channels are muted. And so that mute all snippet works. Now let's see if scene one snippet also works. I'm double clicking here and you see the mute status came unmuted again. All right. Very good. So now let's say the next scene, I don't know off the top of my head what it actually is, but it probably has something to do with the townspeople. So let's just say a whole bunch of uh, townspeople come up here and we have to unmute them. Let's just say like this. Okay, so you go, you simply go into uh, the software here and um, unmute whatever channels you need to unmute and keep the other ones muted. And then you come over here and go click in this next snippet, you, know, you name it something, whatever you want to name it, click um, return, click OK. And now scene two is saved. So now since we've saved all uh, channels, the mute status for all 16 channels, if you toggle, if you switch between scene one and scene two, you can see the microphone status for all 16 microphones is now exactly set to what these what these uh, were, how we saved them, right? So scene one is only one and six, and then it changes for scene two, and one and six are now muted, and only these townspeople that we've uh, un set to unmute are unmuted, okay? And so forth. So let's just do a third one, and let's say, as a third one, we kind of save a scene where, let's just say the whole ensemble is singing. So everyone is unmuted. Okay, so I'm going to go over back here, unmuted everyone. And I'm just going to say all singing. Okay, let's call it something else. This is an, an interesting case, maybe, because here's the thing, the snippets are limited to a total of 100 snippets, right? It goes from zero to 99. So that's 100 snippet um, slots. And you are limited to that. And so therefore, it is a specific, especially for longer shows, it might be worth it to think about configurations that occur more than once in exactly the same way. And in that case, you can actually reuse the same snippet several times in the queue list. Okay, so now, so now we have three snippets here that we want to use for uh, this example. And we also have the mute all at as number zero. So we have a total of four snippets now. Now let's come over to the queues. 
and like a, uh, it i always start the, my first cue my first snippet is always mute all because ha that happens all the time and all the mute microphones need to be muted after you do mic check and for the beginning of the show so i'm going to just leave this here as my first cue as mute all at the top now i'm going this um this screen works slightly differently than snippets to create a new cue you come over here you want to select the one, the last one that is here that exists and then you want to hit add click add over here and it's going to keep the standard default numbering you can see uh, you can actually insert cues here if you already have a bunch of cues and you want to put one in between then you can use these um, sub numbers here to create them and number them differently for now we're just going to keep it simple and and stay as number two and i'm just going to type in here scene one and now now that i have the queue it's empty it doesn't do anything so the way that the queue section works is you can you have to load a snippet and you can load a snippet and a scene but we, we're not talking about scene right, scenes right now because the way i'm using it is I'm setting up snippets and I'm then calling them up with cues. Okay, so here we go. We're going to call up scene one with cue that I named scene one. And this is now a valid cue that you can use. This cue number two is now used to call up scene one, which is index number 12 in the scene list. Okay, now let's uh, select that one and add another one. That's going to be named or labeled two. I'm going to hit mute all in here. And let's just say I call that end of scene. And I'm going to have mute all in here. I'm going to click another one, add another one, name it scene two. Select scene two from the snippet pull down. Now I'm going to, let's just do this and show you this too. There's really no difference. Uh, and scene two. I'm going to put another mute all in here. Then I'm going to create another queue, number five. And I'll call that one, well, we don't have scene three. Let's just call it scene three anyway. And this one happens to have all singing okay that's the one that unmutes all of them and then let's say scene three is continued um, and let's just say we have well let's say we have Tommy and Fiona so let's create a new snippet for this one first so Tommy and Fiona I'm going to create an extra one here, Tommy and Fiona. All right, that works. So we're going to select this one here, Tommy and Fiona. You don't have to name them the same. So this is just another example for maybe a typical configuration because Tommy and Fiona have many scenes together. So wherever you just have to have Tommy and Fiona unmuted and everybody else is muted, you could reuse this snippet and go back to the same snippet rather than uh, creating a new snippet uh, as you go. Because uh, like, like I said, for longer shows, you may need more than 100 snippets if you were to create a new snippet every time anything changes. Okay, at the end of this, um, let's say this is now 5.2. End of scene three. And we're going to hit mute all again on that one. All right, so very good. So now we have a queue list. And this queue list now, when you're, um, when you're on the board, I can show you that um, some other time. Or actually, you can refer to that in, uh, in another video that's on the channel. Uh, you can just, there's a, there's a go button. Um, or you know a button in the section where the show control is uh, has some some control buttons and you can basically always just hit 
that one button, it's a larger button than you know, many other buttons, it's a bit of a larger button on the board just below the, uh, the, the main screen display, a little bit off to the right, and that button then simply just advances uh, the queue list to the next queue. Here on the laptop, in the editing software, you have confirmation that you want to uh, actually select this queue, and I'm going to just hit return again, so I'm just clicking return on my keyboard, um, and you see now uh, this queue is in fact selected, right? So now, let's see if we can get this to actually automatically advance to the next one. I think uh, in this, if you just use the software only and it's not connected to a board, uh, it doesn't automatically advance, but on the board there are different modes and both of them advance to the next queue as soon as you select this one. So here you have to just hit the down arrow, but this is essentially what happens on the board. When you hit the, that go button, um, it advances to the next one. It advances to the next queue. Okay, so now let's go from the beginning again and just uh, watch down here, watch the, the mute status of the 16 faders. So this one is now selected. I'm going to go to scene one and you see one and six are unmuted down here, right? Now I'm going to click return again, or actually the down arrow first. So end of scene, that's a mute all, so they become unmuted again. I'm gonna click the down arrow again on scene two, return and okay. You see this is the townspeople scene again. Um, next one is a mute all. Arrow down is all singing, that's everyone is unmuted. Then it goes to Tommy and Fiona, that's only one and two, and see all the others got muted. And then at the end is an, another uh, mute all. So there, that's in simple terms the way to, how to create uh, the snippets and the cues. And if you're completely new to automation, I would suggest that you just keep it simple for yourself and just use uh, this feature to take care of your of all of your mutes and unmutes. And what I found in the beginning, I was kind of thinking, oh, let me save as many snippets as possible and um, or let me only use as few snippets as, as I absolutely need. And when I have a simple task of just simply muting or unmuting, a single channel, I'm just going to still do that on the individual mute buttons um, rather than saving a snippet. But then I, I came to find out that it's, it takes additional attention to know that I have to click a mute button somewhere versus if I just, whenever something changes, I just have to hit the same button to advance to the next status of the board. This is for, for my brain at least, this is far, far easier if I can just keep hitting the same button everything, every time something changes rather than having to process uh, in my memory or, or from notes whether the change requires me to hit the go button to advance to the next queue or whether it requires me to hit something else, another mute button individually on the faders. So I much prefer um, setting up every single change as a queue here and then you just have to click the go button every time um, the next status uh, comes up and that is the simplest way for me to uh, to solve this and so that's what i showed you right here right now um, once maybe we make another video later where we go into a little bit more complex uh, scenarios of snippets but i just give you a little preview here so now you know that you select the parameters here that you want to save and you select which channels or faders you want to save these parameters for. And so now let's look at the next type of um, event or snippet here that I created. And this is strictly uh, a snippet that controls the configuration of my DCA groups. I told you in another video that I'm mixing everything, all the microphones strictly through DCA groups. These are the DCA groups here in, in the display right now, and they are pre pretty much acting as groups. So I mix, I route 
each and every one of these 16 microphone uh, channels through one of the DCA groups. You can see here, this here is, is the um, strip right down here where my mouse is. This is where you set in, this, in the edit software, this is where you can set which DCA group this fader goes to. This is actually really nice about the software that you can easily see which fader goes to which group. And so, so this um, snippet here, it has the parameters that I've selected are source, comma, scribble, and groups. And so what that does is it controls the naming of uh, the this uh, strip here that you can use to label, give, you know, label the channels and label everything on the board that shows up on the X32 console. Uh, and then the groups parameter controls this strip right here. So which channel is assigned to which DCA group? That's this parameter here. Okay. And so then I control this, or in this particular case, I apply this to all 16 microphone channels and also to the DCA groups that I'm using for my microphones because I'm actually also renaming the DCA groups according to which characters are showing up in those particular groups so that I always know who is where. Okay, so most of the time I have it uh, spread out so that some soloists may be all by themselves in a group and then some other ensemble members that have solo or dialogue lines by themselves um, they might be grouped together bunched together in some and then usually all the other ensemble members i kind of keep them in big larger groups that has all the rest of them and when it's spread out like this here for example i usually keep ensemble male and ensemble female separate because that's that makes it really easy to control the balance um, in ensemble singing uh, between male and female voices. Okay, so let's take a look at what this uh, this group does. And I think I have a few DCA groups. So I'm going to push this down outside of the recording recorded screen just so you can see, because we're, we're not really dealing with the mute buttons, but this way you can see uh, the names here. It's still not quite enough space on the screen. Okay, well, I'll move it back and forth. Okay, so I'm going to call up, um, let's say I'm going to call up this, this group, uh, this snippet here, because this also involves a DCA configuration. So this here is the DCA configuration for scene two dialogue. I'm just going to cancel out of this. So as you can see, see this has the same selection of parameters and channels and DCA group uh, groups that um, the parameters apply to. And so now watch the names. Actually, those names are all, all the same. The names don't change. The names only change on the DCA group. So let me move this over here. Let me see. Goodness. Let's see if I can move this so we can actually see what we want to see. All right. So watch the names down here. And I'm going to double click on this and hit OK. You see the middle ones here are changing. Let me go back and forth between DCA1 and DCA2. There. All right. There you see that. And, um, and then also, in this case, when names change over here, that means also the channels that go to these groups are also changing. So that also changes over here. Anyway, so that's kind of um, a slightly different use uh, of snippets. And um, I'm going to make another video soon where I show you more in depth what you can use the snippets for. But this video here is now uh, showing you in detail how to create a cue list here and how to create, set up the snippets, how to select the parameters that you want to save in a snippet and how to make an, a simple uh, cue list here that simply helps you control fast and easily to mute and unmute um, all of your input mics all in bulk, all at the same time. All right. Well, if you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please um, leave a comment. And this is Thomas signing off for the Artists and Sound channel, and I'll talk to you soon.